Welcome to the latest episode of the miniature painting series. Today will be the final episode of the Dark Souls series. That's right, it took over a year but finally managed to paint all the minis we have for this beautiful board game. And to go out with a bang, I decided to make the last video the one that had the most requests so far, the complete base set of the Dark Souls. But before we start, I have a few things to say. First, I want to thank all the subscribers that have been following the series and supporting the guide. It has been very nice to see the kind of words that you have to share and also to see the results of the minis that you shared on our older social media. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing because we have more tutorial plans for the future and we think you will like the content that we are preparing for you. Second, I must say that I had already finished my base set before getting a shower of requests for tutorials, so I had to improvise. That's why I'm not calling this exactly a painting tutorial, it's going to be more of a color guide and I'll try my best to explain all the steps that I took to paint all the minis. But if you're used to all the other painting tutorials, I hope this will help and bring you great results. Let me know what you think about this new format in the comment section and it will be very helpful for future guides. If you're asking ourselves what about Gaping Dragon, Vord and The Last Giant, we sadly don't have those expansions at the moment, but one day if we get a partnership, who knows, I'll keep you updated in the description. For this big project, I'm listing all the colors I have used here. Then we'll go mini by mini later on. The first step, as usual, is priming the miniature. And as you already may know, we have a full guide on how to prepare the miniatures for painting. So don't forget to check this out before starting. To avoid repeating myself, for all the minis, I finished the base with Abaddon Black, but you can do it any way you like. We'll start the guide with the characters. For the classic knight, I started by painting the pants and cloth with Abaddon Black. Then I dry brushed them with Dawnstone. I painted all the armor parts with Iron Breaker and the chainmail only with Light Belcher. Then I shaded the mini with new oil and dry brushed Necron Compound to highlight the edges of the metal parts. I mixed Mornfang Brown with some Wraithbone to paint the belt with a lighter brown. The shield base I painted with lead voucher. After it dried, I shaded it with new oil. For the trim details, I used Retributor Armor. Going back in time, maybe I should have used Mornfang Brown for the handle of the sword. Even if it's not the look of the game, it would give a good contrast. For the Fierce Warrior, I started painting the skin and the hands with Mornfang Brown. The mini was too small to try painting the eyes for me, so I skipped this and moved on to the next step. Like the others, I used Abaddon Black for the base of the pants and dry brushed it with Dawnstone. I chose Administration Grey for the base of the boots, fur of the cape and sleeves. Then I painted the helmet, tip of the long axe and chainmail with lead belcher. I use Corax White to layer the grey of the fur and create some texture. The leather straps I painted with Bugman's Glow for a change and used Mornfang Brown for the wood part of the shield and handle of the axe. I shaded the shield, the skin, helmet and chainmail with Reichland Flash Shade. Then I used Iron Breaker for the center of the shield and the sides. After it all dried, I lightly dry brushed Retributor Armor on the helmet. I mixed Abaddon Black, Mornfang Brown and Mephstone Red to paint a dark shade for the cape. Then I shaded the cape with Seraphine Sepia. For the stealthy assassin, I started painting the skin with Kislev Flesh. I painted the height of the eyes with Ceramite White and the pupils with Abaddon Black. I lightly dry brushed Golgfag Brown on the cheeks to give it a bit of a ruddy look to his complexion. I finalized the face by mixing Averland Sunset with Wraithbone for the white blonde hair that is coming off his hood. There is a lot of grey tones for the clothes, I had to mix it up so it's not too much monotone. For the pants, sleeves and jacket, I used Mechanicus Standard Grey. For the hood and boots, I used Abaddon Black. I dry brushed the pants, sleeves, jackets, boots and hood with Dawnstone. I waited it dry and painted the leather straps of the jacket with Mornfang Brown. 
I lightly dry brush the jacket and leather straps with Gogfag Brown to make it look a bit dirtier and different from the pants and hood. Then I painted the sword and shield with light voucher. Afterwards I apply new oil to shade the clothes and gears but not the face. For the Agile Herald I also start the skin with Kislev Flesh. Then I paint the eyes with Ceramite White and Ambadon Black. I dry brush Gogfag Brown for a blush aspect on the cheeks and lips. I mixed thousands of blue with Administratum Grey to paint the boots, tunic and gloves. I use Abaddon Black for the base of the pants and sleeves. Then I dry brush the tunic, sleeves and pants with downstone. I paint the chest piece, shield, tip of the lance and helmet with iron breaker. For the leather parts I paint the chest strap with Bugman's Glow and the belt with Mornfang Brown. I also use Mornfang Brown for the lance handle. To finish the lance I use Mephstone Red for the hanging fabric and Administratum Grey for the round detail. I shaded the tunic, boots, chest piece, shield and lance with new oil. After it dried, I dry brushed Necron compound on the metal parts. For the cape, I based it with Corex White, then I shaded the extremities with Seraphine Sepia. Moving on to the enemies. The Silver Knight Swordsman was actually the first ever Dark Souls painting video of the channel, so if you want to see more details, I added the link here, but if you want a quick version, here it is. I start by painting all the metal parts with lead voucher. For the cape base I use Zendrid Dust. Then I shaded the metal parts with new oil and the cape with Seraphine Sepia. Then I dry brush Necron Compound for some metallic highlights. The Silver Knight Great Bowman is very similar to the Swordsman. Metal parts with lead voucher, cape with Zendrid Dust. New oil for the metal shade and Seraphine Sepia for the cape shade. The difference is the bow, which I start the base with Morphang Brown. Finally, I dry brush Necon Chrome Pound for the highlights, including the bow. For the Sentinel, I start by painting the long axe, the shield and armor with Iron Breaker. Then I shaded all the parts with Agrax Air Shade. I added the trim details of the shield with Retributor Armor and used the same color to dry brush the armor, handle of the lens and engravings of the axe. Afterwards, I painted the cloth of the sentinel with Corex White and shaded the tunic with Agrax Earth Shade. I should have added less shade, but I've learned with time. Once it dried, I dry brushed the sides of the fabric with Retributor Armor. For the Hollow Soldier, I tried something different to achieve the cadaveric looks. I started by painting the skin with Mornfang Brown. I dry brushed Gogfag Brown, and then after it dried, I used Elder Flesh to compose the skin tones. I painted the fabric of the hood and the pants with Abaddon Black and dry brushed them with Dawnstone. The boots and chest plate I painted with Hinox Hide and dry brushed the chest with Abaddon Black. Then I used the Administratum Gay for the sleeves and Lead Boucher for the chainmail, sword and shield. Once it dried, I painted the belt with Mornfang Brown and diluted some of it to shade the shield and reach this rusted look. Then I used new oil for the pants, chainmail, chest plate and hood. And finally, Seraphine Sepia for the boots, skin and shield. The crossbow hollow starts with the layer of Mornfang Brown for the skin as well. Then I dry brush Gogfag Brown and after Elder Flesh, just like the Hollow Soldier. I painted the fabric of the tunic with Abaddon Black and dry brushed them with Dawnstone. I let the pants in pure Mornfang Brown and painted the boots and crossbow handle with Hinox Hide. Then I painted the helmet, armor and crossbow details with Lead Butcher. I covered the black and metal parts with new oil and shaded the brown parts and skin with Seraphine Sepia. For the large hollow soldier, I started by painting the pants and hoods with Abaddon Black. Then I dry brushed it with Dawnstone. I painted all the skin with Mornfang Brown. After everything dried, 
I dry brush Kislev flesh on the cadaveric parts of the skin. And it did another dry brush layer of wraith bone to highlight some of the edges. The shoes, leather straps around the wrist were painted with a mix of morphine brown and abaddon black. I used pure morphine brown for the handle of the axe and iron breaker for the blade and details. I shaded the black clothes and the axe with new oil. And I used Reckland flash shade for the shoes and straps. On to the bosses! The Titanic Demon is one of the simplest bosses. I painted the base of the boss with Abaddon Black and dry brushed it with Downstone. After the model dried, I dry brushed it again with Light Boucher over the Downstone to give its metallic look. Then I shaded with no oil to create some shadows and since it got too dark for me, I dry brushed Light Boucher again to bring back some of the metallic reflections. The Boreal Outrider Knight reminds me steps I took for the night, with some blue and frosty twists. I started by painting the entrance of the helmet and fabric of the waist with Macridge Blue. Then I painted the armor parts with lead voucher and shaded them with new oil. After it dried, I dry brushed neck and compound for the metallic highlights. For the sword, I painted the base with ceramite white and dry brushed Chronos Blue for a simple frosted detail. I used Chronos Blue for the fabric highlight and helmet highlight as well. If you want to start somewhere with a boss, Mo is the one. It was actually the first one that I've ever painted. I painted the whole base with Retributor armor and then shaded with Agrix Air Shade. It was simple like that. His counterpart Ornstein has some more steps. I started by painting the pants with Abaddon Black. I painted the knee pad with a mix of Retributor armor and lead voucher because I wanted the gold to be lighter than smooth. The chainmail from the skirt and the tip of the lens I painted with pure lead voucher. Then I painted the fabric of the skirt with a mix of Mastone Red and Abaddon Black. After that, I painted the rest of the armor with the same 50-50 mix of Retributor armor and lead voucher. The hair I painted with methstone red. Then I shaded the red and silver parts with new oil. The golden parts of the miniature I shaded with seraphine sepia. The gargoyle starts to increase the level of difficulty. The first part was painting the skin, wigs and teeth of the gargoyle with morphine brown. Then I dry brushed with gold fag brown and elder flesh on the skin, just like the hollows. But I dosed more gold fag than elder flesh, so it was somewhat darker. On the wings, I really applied on the center so the morn fang appeared more. After that, I painted the bones of the wing with race bone. The feathers and teeth I painted with ceramide white. Then I shaded it all with Reichland flesh shade. For the metal parts, I wanted to use Nihilac Oxide, but the stores were closed at the time, so I based it with Lead Boucher, darkened with new oil, and dry brush with Necon Compound to highlight the edges. The Elite Winged Knight, I started painting with a full layer of Abaddon Black. Then I painted the base of the wings with Corex White. I layered more Abaddon Black on the inner parts of the wing to attempt a feathery look. Then I dry brushed the pants with downstone. The metal holders of the wings and the chainmail parts were painted with lead voucher. I used Macridge Blue with some Abaddon Black to paint the blue fabric. After that, I painted all the armor parts with Retributor armor and shaded it with Agrax Earth Shade. I painted the silver parts with new oil and used the same for the blue fabric. And for the most difficult one, the Dancer of the Boreal Valley, I started the metal base like the others, painted with lead voucher, shaded with new oil, and dry brushed with necro compound. Then I moved to the cape. I did the base with Macridge Blue. After that, I did a clear dry brush layer with Cronus Blue and dry brushed the edges and some parts with Corex White for the phantasmagoric looks. The shoulder part of the cape, I also shaded with new oil. For the sword blade base, I used a mix of Maston Red with Overland Sunset, blended with Overland Sunset on the edges, 
and dry brush the points with Exos Pale Sun. I shaded it all with Cassandora Yellow. The trim details of the armor and headpiece I painted with Balthazar Gold and shaded with Seraphine Sepia. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any constructive feedback, questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to drop in the comment section below. Let us know if you painted or intend to paint using any of the tutorials. I'm very curious to know if those are useful for you. Also, hit the bell button to get an notification when the next episode is up. See you next time!